Hey Moz fans, welcome back to another Whiteboard Friday. I am PJ Howland. I'm the head of SEO and evergreen content at leaders.com. So my background is kind of that sweet spot right in between if you've got SEO over here and content and editorial over here, that middle ground where SEO and editorial and content collide. And if you're familiar with that world, you know that we are dealing with thinner margins, we have fewer resources, and we have less clear direction. So this is, this is the world we operate in. It's a place where we're trying to just get a little bit of an advantage over uh, our competitors. And it's kind of created this fixed mindset of just trying to, to scrape by to just get a little bit of an advantage. However, I think that there's a mindset that can really help break this mold to make sure that every single month is actually your best month ever. And so it's the blue ocean SEO strategy. So what is blue ocean SEO strategy? Well, start with what Blue Ocean Strategy is. If maybe you've read the book Blue Ocean Strategy, maybe you've heard the term thrown around, maybe you haven't heard of it at all. Give me just one minute and I'll kind of explain this with a story. So back in the days when circuses were traveling the countryside, there were two predominant circuses, Ringling Brothers and Barnum and & Bailey. And they would spend lots of time, energy, resources trying to one-up each other. They were producing, you know, who can have crazier stunts, who can have, you know, weirder clowns, who can have, you know, more eccentric animal tricks or whatever. And it got to the point to where they were, you know, competing so hard with each other that they forgot what their customers really cared about. And the sentiments of the day were that, hey, we don't want to see multiple rings. We don't like looking everywhere. Put it back down to one ring. We, we don't like the animal tricks. They're cruel. They're outdated. Uh, but these circuses were so fixed on competing each other that both of them ended up losing out. And then who should come along? This new player, Cirque du Soleil. Now, if you've been to a Cirque du Soleil show, you probably know where I'm going with this. It's unlike a traditional circus. In fact, it's unlike anything else out there. But what they did do is they took what worked and excluded what didn't work from a traditional circus. So they cut out they cut out uh, the, the cruel animal acts. They also kept in the clowns and the acrobats because those were working in the traditional circus. And they brought in this kind of uh, third heat of this uh, theater element, this fine theater experience. If you've been to a Cirque show, you know what I'm talking about. There's definitely a narrative there. And so what they've done is they've created a blue ocean. They, they've created a world where there really is no direct apples to apples competitors. Now, Cirque du Soleil isn't the only player out there who's done this. Um, we could talk about, you know, iTunes. What were your options before iTunes? Netflix, same thing. Before Netflix was on the scene, where were you watching your stuff? Airbnb. You see where I'm going with this, that all three of these businesses or products launch there really wasn't anything out there. It was a true blue ocean. So how do we get that from an SEO perspective? Well, we need to start by realizing where SEO is right now. So SEO is a fixed mindset game. Inherently, it is a red ocean strategy. And if you don't believe me, let me illustrate it this way. You have this situation where you've got a keyword, you look at your competitor and you see, hey, they've got 100 links. And you say, Psh, big deal. I'll get 200 links. Their site speed score is 80. I'm going to make it 90. We're going to have 90. Uh, they write 1,500 words. You see where I'm going with this. We, we write 2,500 words. Okay? That's not really, that's not blue ocean thinking. That is fixed, red ocean, fierce competition mindset thinking. But it's where a lot of uh, a lot of SEOs find themselves. Heck, I've I've been there. That is essentially skyscraper content. It's it's skyscraper, you know, article building. And hey, there there's been a place for that. But at its core, it really is red ocean fixed mindset thinking. So how do how do we get over that? How do we as as SEOs, digital marketers, content marketers, how do we get over the fact that we're playing a red ocean game? Well, it starts with the customer. So picture this. Uh, picture you're sitting down with a customer, except you're not a marketer anymore. You maybe work on the fulfillment or service or product side, and you sit down with them and you say, hey, we are enhancing our product, our service, our fulfillment. 
what is going to make it a better solution for you. And, you know, just picture a great conversation where, where they're going back and forth to you. you, you collect valuable insights, and at the end, you produce a better product, and that customer is grateful for it. Now, picture that same customer, except swap out yourself as, as a product marketer, and now you're a marketer marketer. And, and you're talking about your SEO strategy, and you say, hey, so what we do is we look at the competitors, and we add more words. We see the links that they build, and we add more links. Um, what do you think of that? How does that benefit you? The customer is going to look at you and say, that doesn't help me at all. That's not what I asked for. That's not what I want. That's not the deal uh, of how businesses work. You're here to make my world easier. And truth be told, when we add more words to a page, sometimes we're just making more words out there. You know what I mean? It's something that, that the customers don't want to deal with. So we, we live in this reality, though, where as SEOs, as editorial professionals, as content marketers, we are in this place where we are, we're tasked with almost an impossible task. How do we deliver exceptional content when the people producing that, maybe it's an SEO, maybe it's a writer, aren't necessarily the subject matter experts? So it starts with what you give the writer or the SEO to actually begin this project. And so I've found so many people start with, they just say, hey, here's the keyword, go for it. We're trying to ring for this, just get that piece of content out. And inevitably you will produce a skyscraper piece of content with that. That sets everyone up for failure. Nobody wins when all you do is start off with a keyword. Instead, what I have found is it really takes detailed write-ups that begin with, with interviews with subject matter experts. Um, my interviews that, or, or my outlines that I produce with my team, uh, I've never seen one under two pages. Most of them are between three to five pages that, that we produce for these individual topics. That all has to come from your own, your own insight with like, you know, your team. I can't really produce what your customer wants. That, that's something I invite you to figure out on your own. However, I have found that customers, no matter what industry you're in, I don't care if it's B2B, B2C, I don't care if you're selling SaaS or if you've got an e-commerce platform, whatever, the person that says, yes, I wanna buy that is always a person. 10 times out of 10, you're dealing with people. So what do people want? People want reality. They want authenticity. So there are three things that I think can help anyone, regardless of the industry that you're in, boost up your content. And when I'm talking about content, that could be articles, it could be blog posts, it could be landing pages, it could be white papers, whatever. The point is, is that people want reality. So here's how I've been able to find really good delivery methods for this. Stories. My world is a lot more article focused, but we try to start every article with a story. People love that. Uh, I find a much higher time on page when we lead out with stories. And I know what you're thinking is like, well, you know, Wikipedia is someone we're competing against and they don't start with a story. Nobody starts with a story. Okay. Decide if you want to be a red ocean player or a blue ocean player. The next thing is advice. Now, again, going back to the reality of it, is that we're dealing with situations where we've got writers who aren't subject matter experts. That's okay. Nobody, nobody's in trouble for that reality of the situation. But it does matter that you seek that advice out. So schedule interviews with subject matter experts uh, and, and buy your team a book. Have a book club within your organization. Make sure that you're building expertise within your group. And finally, examples. People want reality. They want authenticity. If you have customer data, if you have case studies, I don't think you should be gating all of that necessarily. There, there's, a, there's a great use case to be made for just letting that stuff out there. Um, people want to see real examples happening in the wild. So you, you come up with this blue ocean strategy that only you can produce because you should know your customer better than me. And you want to figure out how to measure it. Well, if you've been doing content marketing for more than, I don't know, the last 30 minutes, you know that there's a big gap between the first piece of content produced and the dollars in the pocket of the organization. There's a lot that happens in between there. So how do you actually make sure that you can come through on this with proper measurement? I have found that time on page is the first thing that goes up. So before we kind of rolled out this uh, with leaders.com, we were seeing uh, average time on page between three and a half to four minutes. You know, not good, not bad, fine, whatever. 
But after rolling this out, we're seeing average uh, time on page of between five and a half to six and a half minutes. I have pages that are almost 3,000 you know, words in length that actually get read. <laughs> we, we have articles that have average time on page of eight minutes or higher. And, uh, and that's a really validating thing. And I believe that after time on page goes up, then you can start seeing if your rankings and traffic go up. Now you can see right here, there's no tinfoil hat. I'm not, I'm not making a direct uh, insinuation that there is a correlation uh, between you know, time on page and the rankings that Google's gonna hand out to you. What I am saying is that good content gets noticed. And when it gets noticed, you're gonna see those links come in. And you see how this works. We're starting, we're starting backwards, right? Like a lot of the times we, we lead off with saying, I want more links. But in reality, is that really gonna serve us? I would rather play a game where links come as a byproduct of good content. So what's really the takeaway here? I think it's a mindset takeaway. In my organization, we've buried skyscraper content. It's dead, it's in the ground. Now, it doesn't mean we don't look at competitors. Obviously, that would be silly not to do. We're in SEO. However, I think that if you wanna really transition to a blue ocean, limitless mindset, there has to be some kind of reality check where you say, hey, at some point, I'm not gonna be listening to the competitors for every little word that I write on my webpage. Thanks for watching the video today. I look forward to hearing your comments. For anyone that's done this type of shift in their organization, uh, look forward to engaging with you in a good discussion in the comments below. Thanks for stopping by today. See you on the next Whiteboard Friday.